Hello, and welcome to the Footy Podcast. The benefit here is health. Here's Help is a nonprofit comprehensive rehabilitation and educational agency that's been providing treatment services in South Florida since 1968. For more information on Here's Help or Footy's podcast, you can contact us at 305 685 8201. If you need help or know someone who has a substance abuse or alcohol problem, you can call our admissions office at 305 685 8201 extension 224. If you'd like to make a cash donation to Here's Help and join the fight against drug abuse, call Footy at 305-685-8201, extension 227. Now, here's Footy. You are watching the Footy Podcast, and we thank you for being with us. We started out as the Here's Help show many years ago, broadcasting live over the air and uh, talking to local uh, nonprofits, 501c3s, charitable organizations covering events in the South Florida area. And uh, during the pandemic, we made the transition to podcast. And we've been spending a lot of time uh, reminiscing about the good old days at Y100 with Footy and some of our misadventures in the Florida Keys and uh, around the country. Uh, every now and then, we'd like to go back to our roots, as it were, and uh, highlight what's going on in the South Florida community. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're uh, happy to have back with us once again, Robert Gomez. Uh, Robert is here to talk to us about a big event. I, um, we were talking about your title. Exactly what is your title? So I'm the tennis operations supervisor for the city of Coral Gables, and I'll be directing this uh, tournament, the Copa Badia. And um, just looking at uh, some of your history, I, I think your name is uh, very familiar with uh, tennis aficionados here in South Florida. You have quite a long history uh, in, the, in the world of tennis here in South Florida. Yeah, I'm an old dog. I guess I've been around for a little bit. <laughs> well, tell us about this organization. How long has it been going on? How long has uh, this, this been happening? So the Copa Badia is in its ninth year. Uh, it began back in 2013, I believe, and um, it's been a great event. It's actually the the only world ranking tournament in Dade County right now since the Orange Bowl moved up to Plantation up in Broward. Uh, it's left us being the sole international tennis tournament uh, for ranking points. And it's going on this weekend, uh, to at least preliminary event starts today. That's right, Ron. So today the qualification begins. It's going on right now as we speak. Uh, the qualifying round will be tomorrow. And then the main event begins on Monday, May 3rd. And so it goes through till the following Friday. Correct. To Friday. And where does the event take place? It's at Salvador Park uh, in Coral Gables, the Pro Salvador Park Tennis Center. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, what can folks expect if they participate or they go and, uh, and take part in this event? Right. So the, there's 64 competitors in the qualification for, for the boys and 64 for the girls. And then the main draw will have an additional 32 players each. Uh, every single player there has a world ranking or a national ranking. Um, we've got the 43rd ranked boy in the world uh, from the United States. He's playing um, in the main draw. He'll be starting on Monday. It's pretty exciting to have someone of that caliber uh, competing with us. And uh, just players from 24 countries, um, you know, battling for these world ranking points so that they can qualify for the larger and bigger events. This is a junior four level event. So it's a bit of a stepping stone um, to the to the bigger tournaments. It goes up. So then three, then two. And then the great A's would be like the U.S. Open, the French Open and so on. Now, you say boys and girls and you say junior event is uh, what's the age group that we're talking about? So under 18, so they have to be 18 years or younger. I would say that the youngest competitor here is gonna be a 14 year old girl, a local girl from Doral. Her name is Lauren Kettlewell. And she got a wild card into the qualifying of the event. And she's actually on court right now. So yeah, you mentioned uh, this young lady. Are there some, uh, some young players who folks in the South Florida community might know already because of their, their abilities on the court? So we're, we're excited to have uh, Valeria Ray from the Doral, uh, city of Doral. And she is uh, the Orange Bowl Girls 16s champion. So she's participating in the event. She got a USTA wildcard uh, into the main event. A young girl by the name of Natalie Block. 
uh, who won the Easter Bowl 16s championship. Uh, she got a walk hard. She got a tournament walk hard into the event. Um, and these players would be walk hards because both of those are Americans and they probably just don't play as many world class events to accumulate the points, but they certainly have the merit. And uh, I'd be surprised if they don't win a couple of rounds at this, uh, at this event. Um, of course, we have other local players. Dylan Chang from Miami is competing in the event. Uh, he's one of the best boys here in the Miami area, as well as just a whole other slew of kids from all over Florida. Um, you said you, you talked a little bit about uh, the folks who uh, win at this level and you go on to the next level. Tell us a little bit about what the next level is about. Where do they go from here? Right. So, for example, the boy who's in the uh, who's the number one seed, he's going to qualify for the French Open. So wow. if he's willing to make the trip, he's going to get in on his own merit. He wouldn't need a walk hard to participate. Um, our 2015 champion was a 15 year old by the name of Miramir Kamarczyk. He uh, is from Serbia and uh, trained at the Voluntary Tennis Academy up in Bradenton. He went on two years later to become the number one junior in the world. And right now, I believe he's in the top 50 of the ATP Tour world men's ranking. So it is really a stepping stone. Most of the kids that are here, um, if they can get in by the time they're 14, 15, and 16 years old, and they're pretty darn good, and they're well on their way to uh, a successful junior and possibly even a professional career. If they're 17, 18, then chances are they're going to be D1 college level players. There's always the outliers that, that can sneak through. But uh, typically at, at this level, if you're, if you're 17 or 18 years old already and still playing at this level, then you're more on the college track. If you're 14, 15, then you're, you're possibly on a professional track. So at the very least, would it be safe to say that just uh, being able to uh, compete at this level is uh, quite an experience for young aspiring tennis players at this age? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it, it's, it's definitely in every player's calendar in the South Florida area. They always look forward to playing it. It's a circuit. Um, there's a tournament that just ended yesterday in Delray Beach, same level. And then from here, they go on to plantation. It's a three week uh, segment. Uh, they're all on clay. Um, and it's to give the kids an opportunity. This is their last chance is to accumulate some points to see if they can get into the French Open. And um, how long did you say this event has been going on? How many years? This is the ninth year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So can you, are there, have there been some young people who have succeeded at this level and have gone on to uh, become household names in the world of tennis? Well, I don't know about household names, but as I was saying earlier, um, Miramir Kazmarczyk uh, is top 50 in the world. I think he got his highest 30th in the world. Uh, there have been some All-Americans. Alfredo Perez Jr., who's a local kid, went to Coral Gables High School, was uh, All-American at the University of Florida for three consecutive years and uh, ranked number two in the NCAA rankings. Uh, he's out there grinding away on the, on the pro circuit right now, trying to, trying to, trying to make his bones. Um, trying to think on the girls' side, there have been a few players that, uh, that have played. Anna Kalinskaya, uh, she's about 150th in the world. Um, yeah, it's tough out there. Yeah, it's very competitive in the world of tennis, I would imagine. It's global. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, so is this an invitation only event? How do folks qualify to play at this tournament? All right. Great question. Um, so you go around and play in these events and you start accumulating points each time you win a round. You accumulate uh, five points, 10 points if you win your second round and so on. Um, you start accumulating these points and then you, once you establish that world ranking, you enter, you register for the event and based on the number of players that participate and the rankings of those players, a selection is made. So the sign in was yesterday for the qualification. And, um, once the players are registered, it just goes straight by the world ranking and the top 32 players in the world that register for that event are the ones that get in. So if one to 32 in the world registered, then that's the cutoff 32. Obviously that's not the case at this event. Um, but uh, so the cutoff for the, for the main draw for this event was about 500 in the world. If you were below 500, you had to qualify. Also a name that's very familiar to folks in South Florida and uh, probably in addition to around the country, probably around the world uh, in the title of your tournament is Badia. 
uh, Badia Spice is very well known. And, and I didn't want to uh, finish our interview without talking about Pepe Badia, who is uh, a, a wonderful person, a huge supporter of what goes on here at Here's Help and um, a real fan of the world of tennis. Uh, and I, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about Pepe Badia, if you would. Oh, absolutely. Pepe is just an absolutely amazing person, just a great human being. He's always been so supportive of not only this event, but many other events that we've hosted here throughout the years. He's a great fan of the sport, plays the game himself, has a pretty mean backhand. <laughs> and um, it's just great to have people like that involved with our community, helping to give back. And he's always ready to uh, uh, to take the call whenever uh, he's needed. So he's just been an amazing person. He provides spices for all of the players and their parents. Um, this year, uh, due to the COVID, we're not going to do as many um, spectator events, uh, but he's done <clears throat> a big paella through Here's Help. They came out and cooked this massive paella that just was a huge, huge hit. And uh, the parents love getting the spices because most of the gift bags are always all about the players. And we take care of the players uh, through our uh, through one of our other partners with Fila Clothing. But uh, when when the parents, they see those spices in there, they're like, hey, we finally get something. That's great. And so <laughs> just been great to have Pepe involved with us. And we really do appreciate the support. So the paella came from the, uh, the Here's Help Kitchens? It, it did. Yeah, they sent over about three or four cooks and a chef. And uh, the place was smelling unbelievable. Uh, it was just incredible. Well, we should talk about that for just a little bit also, because uh, Pepe was uh, kind enough to uh, provide the culinary school at Here's Help with an absolutely amazing uh, kitchen. It is as top level professional as any kitchen you would find anywhere in the country. And Chef Tracy, who runs the culinary school there at Here's Help, works uh diligently she does a great job with the young men in, in culinary and uh, teaching them to get their food handlers license and it's all part of the uh recovery through education and replacement life uh theory that that uh footy or john across as everyone knows him uh espouses it here as help trying to get these young men um to replace their their substance abuse life with what he calls the replacement life which is you know, getting them on getting them employed. So uh, that's really uh, very cool. I, I have also benefited from several delicious meals from Chef Tracy and the young men at the culinary school, and they really do turn out some incredible food. So uh, that's that's cool that uh, they've also been involved in this uh, event as well. The event is just beginning today. The tournament is just beginning today, and it'll run through uh, to Friday. Uh, you mentioned that due to the uh, pandemic and coronavirus, uh, you've had to kind of um, cut back a little bit on your uh, audience participation. Uh, tell us more about that. Right. So there have been a tremendous number of uh, guidelines and protocols that we've had to follow. We have to do a screening for each and every single player. Uh, each player is allowed one guest, so a plus one that has to also be screened, fill out a questionnaire form, have their temperature checked. Uh, they've all got a ban, which indicates that, uh, that they're allowed to be on the property. Um, and uh, and besides that, there's really no spectators. So it's like what you're seeing at the professional level. You'll you'll watch the Madrid Open is on TV right now, and you'll see that there are very few people in the stands. Maybe a coach, and uh, whoever their plus one might be, it might be a parent, might be usually it's a coach. Um, yeah, so that's been a little bit difficult. It feels a little uh, antisocial and uh, takes a, a bit away from the the atmosphere of the event. Where you know parents and players, coaches are cheering for each other and. We just like that great buzz in the air, you know, on, 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 the, on the grounds. So it's a little bit um, slower right now in that respect, but uh, we're just happy to be doing it. The, the tournament, uh, as all tournaments did in 2020, was were canceled. So we're just appreciative that we're able to get it going and, uh, and the kids are out there competing and they need to, they need to, they, they train hard. And uh, for a lot of them, they're, you know, they're in their junior year or senior year in high school and this is their opportunity to, to make their mark and uh, see what you know, kind of college coaches are out here. The University of Miami coaches are out here checking the players out right now. They're watching from the outside of the facility, looking in, uh, but they've got a pretty good viewing uh, spot there. So they're getting to see some great talent, uh, but these kids deserve it. They, they need to get out there and compete. You just can't keep practicing all day. Is there a way for the general public uh, to look in on the, uh, the progress of the players uh, for during this tournament? Absolutely. Um, so if they go to www.itfjuniors.com, uh, you click on the calendar 
and uh, you'll see the American flag and it'll pop right up there, the Copa Badia with the American flag on there. You, you just click on that link and uh, the tournament draw, the tournament schedule will be there. And that's updated at the end of every single day. Well, Robert, uh, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you particularly wanted to share with us before we wrap up our conversation today? Nothing that we haven't discussed. Just once again, just thank you to Badia Spices, to Pepe, and all of our partners, Fila, Wilson, everyone that's uh, helped us to make this tournament a success. Obviously, the city of Coral Gables has been instrumental in you know providing us with the facility and center. And uh, thank you for having me on the show and being a part of it. Well, we want to wish all the young men and women who are participating and competing the best of luck and uh, and congratulate them on uh, reaching this level of competition in their quest for tennis greatness. And um, we want to urge everyone who is viewing our podcast to support this event. Uh, are there ways that folks can support what's going on with this tournament? Um, I know you have sponsors, but are there are you looking for donations or perhaps volunteers to help with the event? I mean, it's, it's a little, the event's going on. So I assume you have all of your volunteers in place, but perhaps moving forward, maybe next year or for whatever other events you have going on in the year. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So for this year, we're pretty set with our volunteers, but uh, if anyone would ever like to be participate in the future, and we're going to be doing this hopefully for the next 10, 15, 20 years, um, our telephone number here at the Tennis Center is 305-460-5621. That's my direct line. If you'd like to get involved or you'd like to be a partner or sponsor for the event, uh, please feel free to reach out to me, Robert Gomez, and uh, we'll make sure that you get involved. All right. Well, we know you're in the throes of the tournament. We want to keep you too long because I'm sure you're uh, very, very busy running around and taking care of things. Uh, but if you could just give us that website address one more time so folks can check in and find out how their favorite players are doing. All right, so that would be www.itfjuniors.com. And then you look for the calendar, Copa Badia, here in Coral Gables. And uh, you'll find all the information there, the schedule, the draws, the results, and everything that you need to know about the event. Excellent. Well, it's always good to speak with you. Good to see you again. And um, best of luck with the tournament this year. And again, the best of luck to all the young men who are competing. And I uh, want to thank you and all the folks there for uh, providing young men and women uh, something to do to keep them busy. You know, it's it's young, young people at that age. Sometimes it's hard to keep entertained. Uh, so uh, good old healthy competition and uh, sometimes is just what the doctor ordered. So we appreciate the fact that you're providing young people an outlet for their energies. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate the, the thoughts. Thank you for listening to the footy podcast to benefit. Here's help for more information about the footy podcast or here's help. Contact us at 305-685-8201. If you need help, or know someone who has a substance abuse or alcohol problem, you can call our admissions office at 305-685-8201, extension 224. If you'd like to make a cash donation to Here's Help and join the fight against drug abuse, call Footy at 305-685-8201, extension 227. The executive producer of the Footy Podcast is Sam Zarko. COO of Here's Health.